Hello everyone, in this tutorial we'll be going over how to simulate a ducted fan in open foam. The model we'll be using is an actuator disk inside a duct. So here are the files for this tutorial. Uh, these are the open foam case files, uh, the mesh in, uh, in terms of Gmesh scripts, the pressure and velocity results that I'll show at the end of the video. So let's go over the mesh first. So this is an axisymmetric 2D simulation. Um, I have a previous tutorial uh, in how to set a simple axisymmetric 2D simulation that you can look at if you're not familiar. Um, this is the line of s uh, rotational symmetry. Um, this, is, this is the far wall, and this is the inlet, and this is the outlet. And so the ducted fan here is in the middle. Um, this is the duct, just a wall, um, with a boundary layer mesh extrusion and this is the internal face that will be used as a actuator disk. We'll, it'll be a baffle that'll be split and we'll use the cyclic boundary condition to impose a pressure jump across this boundary. So let me mesh it so you can see the boundary layer mesh. So you can see there's a structured boundary layer extrusion with a unstructured uh, mesh around it. And yeah, that's, that's the mesh. So let's go ahead and generate the mesh. I've listed the commands in the readme file. So here, let's generate the mesh. Okay, now let's convert it to and, and store it in the open foam case directory mesh to foam. Okay, done. Now we need to adjust the boundary uh, file so that it is consistent with what we want. So these are the wedge surfaces, the front and back of the axisymmetric uh, uh, slice. So we define them as a wedge. And here's our baffle. Um, we'll be using the cyclic boundary condition. And what happens in a cyclic boundary condition, you need to have two faces that correspond to each other. Um, so you need to have a neighbor patch, and we'll name it baffle other. So uh, the baff creation of the baffle splits into two faces, and um, so we'll need to create the other face for which we've named the neighbor patch, baffle other. And this is also cyclic and corresponding patch is the original baffle patch. So since we've added a boundary we want to change the total number up here to 8 instead of 7 and we just want to change this to a wall and that should be it for the boundary file. Now we can proceed with the actual creation of the baffles so let's take a look at the baffle dict, which is in case system. Um, so here, this is familiar. In a previous tutorial, I've detailed how to create uh, a baffle. Um, but here we have two different uh, patches uh, that the baffle will be split. So, um, And also, we specify the patch fields. So this is pretty much the boundary conditions that will be automatically added by the open foam create baffles utility in the zero folder in the in the boundary and initial conditions specification. So um, the master patch happens to be uh, where the jump needs to be enforced. You know, I just find this through testing and running the simulation. Um, um, because it might, it could be the slave patch where where the flow enters in in the direction of the pressure jump. So you just have to test and see for yourself. It's pretty simple. So the master patch will impose the jump 800 pascals in the pressure across the baffle. So the air flows right through, and the velocity remains the same, and everything else except the pressure just increases, as, as in the um, actuator disk momentum theory model. Um, so yeah, we specified for every uh, every field that we have, the boundary condition. Um, this is a fixed jump, patch type cyclic, 
and of course we have the neighbor patch specification and these are pretty much the same except for this jump here which we've ascribed only to the master patch and yeah that's pretty much it um, flip is a useful parameter in case you see your uh, your uh, jump going the opposite direction you can just simply switch this flip and it'll switch it to the right direction so uh, now understanding that we can go uh, ahead and create the baffles so we use the create baffles command and it was successfully converted we have a little warning about the initial condition so that's fine and now we can proceed to run the simulation so it's pretty pretty simple and quick Let's go into case and run our simulation with pimple foam. As you can see, it's running smoothly and nicely. Um, this takes a little while, so I've prepared the results for you to watch. So first I'll show the pressure. You can see there's a short uh, evolution, and you can see that there's some the flow is entering with some pressure and there's some discontinuity across the boundary uh, sudden high pressure increase that is consistent with the analy analytical model of the actuator disk um, I'll show you the velocity as well so you can see there's some evolution and the, the uh, flow is sped up along the due to the pressure difference imposed by the actuator disk and you have a high speed flow through the duct. Um, you notice a huge speed here um, and in, in, a real, in a real duct uh, there's a problem with uh, separation along this inner wall and you can kind of see there's some some uh, boundary layer growth here. Uh, the, the low speed region grows along the duct length. Um, so yeah that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, with this simulation, you can experiment with different duct configurations. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and happy foaming.